Hi, hello. My name is Manuel Hernandez. This video is only to introduce briefly the software EndNote. So why EndNote is so useful? Well, we are going to see uh, the main uh, functionalities of the software and you can judge by yourself, but I can just tell you right now that it's basically the best software you can use in academic writing. So let me give you some examples of this. Uh, after you deliver your first uh, assignments in any module, sometimes in your feedback uh, might be referring to this uh, lack of adopting a consistent referencing system. And some students don't know exactly what is this. Sometimes in the uh, students' works, you can find uh, reference uh, organized in a very messy way. Like for example, here, a web, uh, a URL, uh, then later, something that is supposed to follow a consistent uh, um, reference style and then later book art by Jonathan uh, Wollstoneholm. This uh, obviously uh, it's following a very different style. This is not uh, what we are expected to deliver uh, in an, any academic work, whether we are talking about a module or a final dissertation. Some of the times you can find other works like this one it is perfectly fine, perfectly well uh, referencing, although it's not really following the University of Hull guidelines. And you might receive some feedback in relation to that. So first of all, uh, what is the style we need to follow? I mean, uh, you might know this already, but basically University of Hull has four different styles that are supposed to be accepted in any academic work. To a school level, we only really work with this format and I would, uh, I would recommend to follow only this uh, system of referencing. So when you go to uh, Google Scholar, you, you can do a search about topic or about uh, a particular name and just Google myself, why not? So when you go here and you say, okay, I'm going to read this book, you get the physical book, you read the book or you read a digital version of the book, whatever. Sometimes you can uh, just extract the references using this uh, um, uh, side box. Harvard would be this one and you can copy and paste into, into your document. That could be perfectly fine. But sometimes it is useful to uh, have uh, the references in a database. So you can uh, organize them, you can look for the one you want or you can change the uh, reference system when it is necessary. By the way, sometimes uh, this system is not uh, properly formatted. So don't only copy and paste from Google assuming it's going to be right. You need to check that uh, the way it is uh, collected on the database is appropriate. So how you can create your own database using um, EndNote? First, you can import an existing uh, collection of uh, records from a database. Also, you can introduce one by one uh, manually the uh, records you want to be in the database or the documents you want to have uh, uh, a record of. Importing reference is going to save you a lot of time. Well, the icon of the EndNote is here. When you click on that, or go through and it automatically loads the last library you open. So we are going to create a new library. So a file new. And then I would, I would suggest is to create that on the Dropbox or on your box. And the reason for this is because if you are updating that uh, from different computers, it would automatically update and you will have always the same database. Another option is to work with the uh, EndNote uh, version on the cloud, which is uh, very similar in interface, but you just need to log in uh, to the uh, tool, which is a, a, a internet-based tool, okay? I'm going to use this desktop version here and it's totally empty, of course. If we create a new reference, and remember reference could be anything from a, a book, uh, a YouTube video, a website, an electronic uh, paper, anything. 
Okay, we're going to try with another author. Let's see, for example, the RMD. So here we have uh, the, the information. And in this case, the information is, is much more appropriate because it tells you the name of the journal and it tells you the volume, the issue and the year. So you have uh, all you need, uh, uh, all information you need is it's here. I introduced this author, one of the co-authors. The thing is, it is in red because it's the first time we we add this uh, author. And then later, here. Well, this is obviously a, a mistake of the database. If you see here, the name is after the surname, but then later it says Darren Mundy, which implies, uh, you know, the name before the surname. This is obviously wrong. So what you have to do it is always add it in the same format. So Monday, Darren, okay. And then later year, 2009. Oops. Okay, title, the title of the uh, article. Okay, the title of the uh, um, journal. Okay, again, because it's a new information, it's red. And then you have the name of the volume and the name of the issue. Remember, always uh, uh, this is uh, volume and issue, it's presented that way. So it is two and one, and then you have to put the pages. So obviously, 74, 88. We just close the reference and it is already created there. So it is a journal article. It would be different if it's a book section or if it's a thesis or if it's a web page. Okay, anything can be referenced, but you need to identify that properly because if not, the database would mix uh, the different fields. So uh, I wouldn't touch this. This is a journal article. That's very clear. So another thing you can do, which is quite more easy than that, you just download the EndNote file. And when you click on that, it automatically retrieves all the information from the database, in this case from Scola, but you can do that from Scopus or from Web of Science or any other digital repository. Once you have this, you can uh, uh, import. You have to move that uh, to, well, it's already on references, so that's, that's perfectly fine. You need to check that all the information is right. It is in the right field. Okay, so this is a journal article, volume, issue, page. It missed the page, okay? So uh, so if you visit the website and you visit the, the article, you might find always the page and you can add that. As you know, you can do that as well through Scopus, for example. Uh, you sign in uh, with the name of your institution, the University of Hull. So, for example, social media, Facebook. Okay, you have a lot of documents, but if you manage to filter them using, for example, only the ones of 2020, only those related to social science, articles, so Facebook and social media, for example, only those published in United States and English, and then you want to, uh, after all this filter, to export all of them. You can always export them as a CSV or you can select some of them and export them using uh, a note. Okay, so here are all that information. And this is very useful because that way you have all your sets to just check all of them in your database. Here, export. And this creates a RISC file that uh, it can be imported in EndNote. When you have only three references, this is not a problem. This is very easy to manage. But what, uh, what happens when you have a lot of references and you want to uh, find the information you uh, remember about uh,
So when you have three references, it, this is not really a problem at all. Uh, but what happens when you have lots of references? So for example, this is my uh, own library. And uh, obviously what I do is create the groups here. So depending on the papers I'm working or my publications or uh, reports or news, and this is uh, much more easy to manage if you create these folders here. I just create a group and you uh, try to manage that a little better. Okay. Uh, if you want to look for a reference, you select all references and you search here by uh, anything. For example, you can select by anything. Okay. And you can see here uh, social media. And these are the papers or the uh, documents that are related to social media in a way or another. You can order them by the different features. If you want to edit any of them, you just need to and click on it twice and you just change any information you want. One of the things that you can do as well is to attach a PDF. You can always attach it to the uh, um, fish to the to the database file and it will be already here for your access i wouldn't recommend this because then your database is going to be massive and it's going to be a little messy to manage i don't do that but it's something you can do if, if you fancy but basically what you might be more interested in is uh, the functionalities related to the microsoft word one thing is that you don't have uh, to copy and paste anymore. You don't have to look for the best reference, copy and paste it uh, into the list of references. EndNote will adapt your database to the style that you have selected in outputs. So you know that to introduce references from your database, the only thing you have to do is to insert citation and then here write the name of the author or the year or whatever, and it will show up. Once that you know exactly what you want to, you insert that, it would insert and it will create the reference within the text and the end uh, reference at the end, the bibliography. Another way of doing that is from your database. You select the document and then here in tools, uh, you have side where you write and insert selected citation on the uh, document and it got, you got it here. Right now here I uh, deactivated the update uh, just uh, so it runs more smoothly but you can uh, activate it again. So you uh, select that and it transforms. As you see, when you uh, have uh, both reference together, they are merged. If you want to eliminate one of the reference, uh, you just go here, here, remove citation, okay? And it changed. So we are all the time working on this Harvard Hall system. This is the output style that you have to select in the tool. This is really an advanced function, so I don't expect you uh, to use it at this point, but you might want to do it in the future. Uh, so basically, uh, when you are uh, with a reference, you know this reference at journal article, and then you have uh, in preview, you see the form that it adopts, okay? This is following a style. The style right now here is this uh, uh, journal I was submitting uh, last week, but uh, it could be, for example, APA, you could see how it changed automatically, or uh, Harvard, uh, which is probably the one you might be more interested in. So in order to uh, look for Harvard, just choose a style, Harvard, Harvard Hall. Okay, and here we have, this is the uh, style you need to use in your uh, own work, okay? If uh, you don't have Harvard Hall, you can import the style. If uh, you don't know how to import the style, you can always edit the style. And this is an advanced feature. 
So that would be uh, here on edit, output, edit, uh, harbor hall, which is the one that is selected. So here is where you see specifically how the different behaviors related to your uh, database are. As I say, you probably don't need to edit this. I would only uh, import the most appropriate style, in this case, Harbor Hall. Uh, if you don't have that in your software, I will provide that uh, through a link. So don't worry so much about this. Well, uh, that's all for today. Uh, I hope you can see uh, clearly how useful it is to have uh, this tool. If you have any other question, you can uh, send me an email directly contact by Canvas, or you can uh, arrange an appointment uh, using the Calendly. So thanks for your time and see you soon.